What's going on, Workforce? Brian and Chris here, just coming in hot off of the 10-year plan for Final Fantasy XIV. If you are here hanging out with us live, you're awesome. If you're watching this video over on work to game you're awesome as well. So we're going to just dive into the content itself. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a longer video, so hopefully you just kick back, relax, and enjoy uh, the information. If you were, uh, you know, like if you're just kind of catching up on this, we just did a game called Two Truths and a Lie where Chris revealed all the information to me because I've been out of pocket. And uh, honestly, it's it's freaking incredible. It's just something so exciting to see. So that's the intro. Let's get into it. Chris, the floor is yours. You already revealed to me unto, unto known amazing looking grass, which feels so... If anybody was there for the 2.0 reveal, where people were pissed off about how the grass looked in 2.0, and I remember that going like, what are you talking about? It looks great. So what do we got? Okay, so first they went through the history, the first 10 years. Um, so this was broken into a couple of chapters. Uh, and first was 2010 to 2021. For any of you that haven't been around for a long time, this is something they've done a couple of times. I think the Noclip documentary does it most uh, disciplined, like most, most, I don't know, most well done to me. But this is... Um, this basically talks about from when the 1.0 launch was 930 of 2010 all the way to 127 of 2021 with the Endwalker launch. So for any of you that haven't followed that uh, along, it was a neat trip down memory lane. Um, but from there, we moved into the next 10 years. Uh, so you want me to go through any of those dates, Brian, or you, you remember all that? I, I, I was there. <laughs> you so were there. I, I was all good. Right. So now we're not going to talk about the next 10 years. Um, what they want to talk about, I wish I'd taken more screenshots, but... Um, can I control the show? Can you I can. Do? You can control. How do, I do that? How do I control the show? Do I have to open it up in another? I don't, I don't know. Uh, but it can just be our two faces for a little bit. Okay. So we are going to advance um, the game as a solo and multiplayer experience. This is going to be the game's first graphical update. Then during this show, they're going to talk about the entire 6.x roadmap. Um, so section one, they want to talk about the game being solo friendly. These are some massive things. These are where why I could miss Sphere Brian quite a bit in True Truths and a Lie. Uh, because this is going to be enormous updates to the trust system. All MSQ dungeons and four player trials will be updated to the trust system. MSQ four man, not eight mans, not non MSQ dungeons. Uh, but this will all be done between patches 6.1 and 6.5. Uh, at the end, we'll talk about a patch schedule, so we'll go over that's, how that breaks down. That's intense, guys. Like, just the fact that they're sitting here saying, like, a lot of this is happening in 6.1, and then it's like, and the next, and the next, and the next. Woo! Like, I, I this is a so love letter. They open the show with. <laughs> this is an absolute massive love letter to the community and to the game itself. Like, it is, it is so hard to do something like that. They've been working on that for a very, very long time. All right, go ahead. Um, I do, as Farmer Girl calls it a night here, I do want to say thank you to Farmer Girl who gifted out uh, 50 subs tonight Ooh, throughout, wow, the, thank you, throughout the stream so that people would be able to enjoy the experience ad friendly. So I do, do, do want to say thank you to Farmer Girl there. Um, okay. So from here, uh, they they will be doing this incremental. Um, it if So they said you may notice like if a certain thing isn't added right away, that's because that dungeon, it seems like they do want to be able to do this as like 2.0, then 2.x, then 3.0. But the way they phrased it made it seem like, hey, if there's a particular dungeon that's a problem, it may slide out. But that's just because like it's a lot of work to get done. Um, 6.1 is targeting the 2.0, trust, uh, making it trust compatible, not 2.x. Mm -hmm. um, the eight player trials they expect to talk about in 7.0 or later. They're not ready to deal with eight man content. Okay. Um, the goal is to make these trust compatible, not trust replacing. And so the goal is that this is still a multiplayer game. They still want to encourage that. But for players that are afraid to try this game because they want to play through the story before deciding whether or not they want to play this as an MMO, there's not really a way to do that right now. Um, and so this drastically would change the way that feels for those players that do think like the multiplayer thing, especially if they're queuing as like a DPS or something, um, they'll be able to do that. And the question then was, will I be able to do it with my scions or will I be able to pick who goes with me? That's going to be a more contextual answer. They said like, sometimes it's not going to make sense because you'll walk towards a dungeon in the story and the scion that you're with will go, okay, I'm going to go over here and do this while you do that. Well, then it wouldn't make sense if then you queue into the dungeon and then they're there. 
Um, so it's sometimes it's going to be other adventurers. Sometimes it'll be other people that they say have the echo. I don't really know what that means. Um, but it seems like that's all going to be things they go over. And I imagine because this is broken down by patch, they'll be going over at each patch if it's something they feel they need to explain. Okay. Um, uh, they also, while they're doing this, want to be tuning some dungeons. There are dungeons they don't feel uh, live up to the quality of what they would release now. In the past, they said they're proud of ARR, but like obviously they think they've gotten better as devs and they're more capable of things. Toto Rock, for example, when you're hit with that slow, they don't like that. So they're getting rid of that. Um, that was an example. Cape Westwind is just going to be gone. It is now an instance battle only. Praetorium and Castrum wow. were eight person and will now both be adjusted down to four person dungeons, which means they will be trust capable. Okay. Uh, and Praetorium is being broken into parts because it's too long. So like the Ultima portion will be its own section. Mm -hmm. The La Habrea section is now going to be a side scenario quest. So that will no longer be Man. stuff you do in a dungeon. Wild. Massive. That's wild. Like it's man like like <laughs> all right like that's we a could, lot we could well we could sit here and then talk about like like digital preservation versus like obviously evolution and this feels like it's definitely a needed evolution but it like ultimately i'm like man they, like if you want to check it out if you want to know what it's all about turn that yeah. mother party out <laughs> sorry <laughs> no and i i do think there like there are things that i i know you say you wish you'd had recorded from mm -hmm. Kind of before from like 1.0 yeah um this is your chance yeah like we know 6.1 is a little ways out so um you know i imagine praetorium and, and castrum are going to get run a lot i bet the msq roulette gets run an, an epic amount between now and 6.1 for people that want to use it to level those other jobs and experience it one last time because yeah. that's that's going to be a drastic change to the game miss sarah saying like also for those nervous about wanting to learn this by tanking and healing like that's just going to help ease that burden so much and i that I, i'm all for it like that's one of the things we uh, that's one of the things that was really awkward about stormblood and endwalker it's like hey are you stressed about playing with others well play with others so that you can no longer have to be stressed like it's like right. all right bring right. it you gotta bring it back you gotta bring it back so now we're gonna talk about graphics updates here so you can see that my yeah you're good there we go graphics updates we're doing it um the whole section, the second section here is all technical. They cannot update the entire game at once. This will have to be done in phases. They are aware that that is going to mean that there are times that some things in the game are updated and other things are not. Um, and those things will therefore look worse by comparison. Mm -hmm. Now, thankfully, this is a game with a lot of load screens and stuff baked in. So there's a fairly easy way to like break apart the expansions or break apart the zones. or But there will still be moments because they're also going to be updating the NPCs so I imagine, like, say they update all the Scions, and then you end up in some zone where there's an NPC that's like a race that hasn't been addressed yet or, or something like that. It's going to be a little weird. I think it'll be most noticeable in cutscenes. Um, because cutscenes in this game, I have to assume it's going to be kind of done in real time throughout the cutscenes because, like, our characters render in the cutscenes. They don't feel like they're pre-recorded. They feel like they're they're kind of being generated by the game. So I don't, I don't know how that's going to work. Um, the chat did say, are we going to be getting 4K grapes? Uh, and this got Yoshi P to laugh pretty solidly there. Um, this will be ongoing. Um, it does seem like some of this may trickle into the 7.0 expansion release, as opposed to most of the things they talk about today will be rolled out prior to 7.0. Um, they did say that the PS4 will not be dropped before 7.0. Um, if it is given the same amount of life that, six, that the PS3 was, it would actually continue into 7.0 and be dropped with 8.0 would be my guess, but none of that was confirmed yet. Okay. Um, they are aiming for from your entire screen to be aesthetically appealing, suited to a multiplayer environment. They are not going to try to take on the graphics of standalone single player titles. They will be increasing the minimum spec with the release of 7.0, but they will still be trying to accommodate a wide variety of hardware specs. So hopefully it's not like a massive jump there. But I know they talked a little bit about how this can be CPU heavy. So like things are just going to have to move a little. Mm -hmm. um, they are looking at making sure that for PS4 to keep it as, as reasonable as possible, that they add options that are already there on PC. Um, some of the options they know they'd like to add to PS4 will be for you to choose to either prioritize um, graphics or frame rate because in certain types of content or certain types of players, you may prefer one. I always prefer frame, frame rate. rate. Yeah, 
but right. there are players who just want to play through the story and like if they skip a couple frames they skip a couple frames um but for ps4 they at least want to be able to that that should help them get through at least the launch of 7.0 um we are getting higher res textures for hair skin and gear not all gear will be done by 7.0 this was what they showed off they let us react they talked about it and then they said it will not look like this <laughs> <laughs> so uh, not this much of a jump um that's I was like that's value. a jump um i it would instead be something closer to this i don't have the actual jump screenshot here um but it it will it will be it will be beautiful um it will be much closer to what i've been showing here these improved but not massively redone yeah um material will like uh skin metal and fabric um will all be adjusted but the overall appearance will be adjusted as little as possible so they showed off some screenshots those screenshots are going to circulate some of those screenshots are going to look drastically different there's a screenshot of titania that's drastically different yoshi p said that he as a non-graphical designer was having trouble telling the difference between what they could like they would show like here's what we can do with these hardware specs and here's what we can do with it. And he was having trouble telling the difference so he had them change the colors of the lights so that he could see the way the lighting was affecting the screenshot mm -hmm. that's not what's actually going to get implemented in the game so i'm just telling you there's already going to be screenshots saying look at how different it is and he's like no 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 it's not these are not the actual side by sides these are for me to have a better feel um for what is possible and we're still exploring that uh this will be applied to old npcs where possible and some of that could be 7.0 and beyond they're still testing what all can be improved and what can't. Um, there will be more ground textures and more objects. If anybody has like a clip from that, um, I wish I'd screen cap that. Um, they showed Favnir and it's drastically different. So when that one gets circulated, that is drastically different. So the memory is being increased. There's going to be more objects, more textured. Uh, and the grass here is the screenshot I grabbed. It's, mm -hmm. it, it is that drastic. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good for sure. Um, the grass was something he said it made him really mad over the years. It's always bothered him. <laughs> oh. um, we're getting additional lighting. The goal is to tackle depth and immersion, and this will even be in trials. It's going to affect things like the way shadows move, and it's going to decrease flickering. Um, they're also looking for better auto-generated greenery, um, which will add more variety. So you can see like there's only flowers on the left side of this. That's why I grabbed this one. There's only flowers on the left side. All screenshots are on the Reddit Discord. Oh, perfect. Yeah, pull that up because I'd like to see these side by sides and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do it. I'm doing it right now. Um, Discord takes forever to boot because Discord's like the world's slowest application. It takes on too many things. Uh, incredibly powerful. It takes forever. Um, ambient occlusion and fog effects are things they're taking on. They just couldn't show those at this time. Man, you know, that's going to be no wild. That. That's going to be wild. They had no ability to take that on. Um, but I'm sure they will. Let me. They do fog effects like so well in New World. If it's anywhere, even like remotely, like 10% of what they could do in that other game, like that would be so awesome in 14. Where is the Final Fantasy? I have the balance Discord. I know it's here. I've joined too many Discords. Do any of you have that problem where you've just joined way too many Discords and you can't find them? I put them into folders. I folder them. I folder them. This doesn't there it is okay oh perfect okay here we go oh wow There's okay yeah they said lollafels were particularly hard a rogadin i like that it looks really uh, yeah definitely definitely nice cat girl <laughs> looks like a shader yeah So that's the actual change there. Yeah, that looks good. Um, as opposed to when they said, no, that's not it. <laughs> they, they, yeah, Trolled they said, this is, this is not what we're looking for. Um, so it's a pretty it's a pretty drastic difference. And this is what it's going to look like with the lighting effect changes. Remember, the temperatures and stuff of lights, they changed intentionally to show. So like this image was the one that he really focused on. Like, it's not going to be that red. He yeah. wanted to be able to see. He wanted to be able to better see the difference. So like they, he had them put in red lighting to be able to see the difference. And Titania is just not going to look that different. That's just gotcha. not reasonable. Um, Uznair. 
Okay, very cool. And then this. Look at all that extra ground clutter! Oh, wow, yeah. It's a lot more objects on the ground. And, like, the, the steps have different texture to them. Oh, as yeah. As being a repeated texture. I literally stopped in the story um, in Labyrinthos to talk about repeated textures and how it limits the immersion of the game. Mm -hmm. People said I was nitpicking. <laughs> Don't you love it? Don't you love it? Like, there's so many times where it's like people just get so pissed off at us. And then it's like, welcome back. Couple months later. Oh, we weren't wrong. Not so near. We're not being this to because because we like it it would be so much easier to lie and just tell people what they want to hear as opposed to be like no chris is a professional architect he's going to talk to you about design brian's a software engineer he's going to talk to you about how how these things actually come together yeah any architects out there i did not finish my license so just be no stamp no stamp be clear no stamp um I don't okay. know what that means. I'm not an architect. <laughs> uh, the term means something as opposed to softwares can throw around the software can throw around the term architect however they want. Uh, <laughs> it, it has a legal standing. Gotcha. gotcha. Uh, all right. I cannot represent myself in court. Uh, so <laughs> they 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 talked about this and um, that was that was a huge section. It was a bunch of technical stuff. I yeah. took a screenshot of the last one there. Um, massive massive updates for any of you that have ever spent time in crystarium that's an area where i feel like i get a lot of shadow flickering um that'll be a really huge update when you're standing out there and the shadows are kind of passing over you it doesn't, gonna, it doesn't feel good this is gonna look so good on a ps5 all right future section three here um they are going to continue to update us on all of this on an appropriate schedule i don't know what that means but it does mean we are not done mm -hmm. hearing from them about what is upcoming. So this is not, we talk to you once every 10 years. Um, I expect these to be more ongoing dis discussions. Um, this is separate from the standard live letters because 6.1 is still getting its own live letter on March 4th. And then probably a second one would be my guess. Um, so they, they wanna talk about that um, as they continue to update from 6.1 and beyond. We are getting more Hildebrand, 6.1 through 6.5. We are getting Tataru's Grand Endeavors as a side story, which mm -hmm. I believe somebody said Mr. Happy tweeted out. Sounds like a direct-to-DVD thing. <laughs> uh, and that'll be side story uh, 0.1 to 0.5. With 0.1, we are getting Mists of the Realm. We're getting something called Crystalline Conflict. I don't know if that's Relic or what that is. Um, and we are getting the Arxadara uh, Beast Tribe Quest. Dragon Song's Reprise is the name of the ultimate in 6.11. That's two weeks into the patch. Ultima's Bane will be our next Unreal. They just finished the testing. He said it was challenging. The trust system's going into all ARR MSQ dungeons. The calling card system, they still haven't settled on a name. We're getting new hairstyles for Roth. We're getting Imperium, which is his guard housing. Custom deliveries with Ameliants. New trials and other assorted updates. Glamour is expanding plates. Data center travel will be patched 6.18. Um, in the pre-show, he also talked about like how much their staff is growing and gave like a neat story there and that there will never be nfts in final fantasy 14. um he talked about kind of how he's had an interest in like the metaverse and all that and he's been wanting to take these interviews related to it but there will never be nfts yeah i don't in... think they would introduce that into the flagship aspect of the game until some point where if the whole culture changes and it's like well why in a minute but that's yeah, but right now we're. I think that's the right play. You don't sit here and just say, "Hey, you love this game? Hey, I hear you hate these things. Let's get married." You know, no, no. no. Right. Uh, and then uh, Chad is also uh, saying that the crystalline conflict is the PvP mode, uh, which I. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah. I forgot Thanks, the Chad. name. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while. I, I, I'll so they didn't talk you. about relic either. Yeah. And right. other PvP changes because they talk about all these other PvP changes. So yeah. It's not just the new mode. It's there's like this whole new battle pass. They didn't talk about any of that. Mm -hmm. So, like, the and more includes, like, huge pieces of content. Um, 6.2. This was all... They basically gave us this outline so that they could announce the delays. So, 6.2. Um, we got trusts for the rest of 2.x and possibly into Heavensward. They said mm -hmm. they are hoping, like, it seemed like two to three dungeons is the goal. Mm -hmm. um, new weapon enhancements. I don't know if that's just, like, the item level increase or if that's where our relic system comes in. Um, we're getting a new system called the Criterion Dungeon System. This will scale variable difficulty between one to four players. The number of players you zone in with will determine the difficulty. Um, 
It is meant to be so that players can challenge themselves. We will be getting a second and a third Criterion dungeon during patch 6.4 and 6.5. I don't know what that is. And I thought that makes sense because the way he responded to Deep Dungeon and the way he responded to Asmongold asking about one to four man content was an identical response back at the media tour. And so I thought he in his head was grouping those as Deep Dungeon will solve all these things for small group difficult content. But then in 6.3, we're getting a Deep Dungeon. So 6.2 will also have Island Sanctuary, New Pandemonium, more Faux Hollows, other trials and more. So it's still going to have your one dungeon, you know, two tomes in a raid type stuff. So okay. this is all typical. This is all in addition to typical. Um, 6.3, we're getting the trusts for the rest of all of Heavensward, all the way through MSQ, including the 3.x. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting ultimate duty number five. Now they had talked about only potentially considering a second ultimate for this expansion. And how daunting it was to think of an ultimate before they even release this one. And now they turn around and say it's going to be 0.3. Yeah, that that's seems exciting. crazy to me. There's no way that doesn't get delayed. Well, even, um, if it, even if it gets delayed, that's still awesome for the community. One of the things that was really hard about, uh, you know, 6.1's, you know, like the, the, the new ultimate was when you looked at the, like, just the surge, when you looked at, like, just the content drought, how cool would it have been for building up to endwalker hype and having this like really 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 hard fight that's brand new for everybody to jump into it so um yeah new ultimate 6.3 i wonder if that means we'll get ultimate number six in six point you know five <laughs> who knows that's big that's big now 6.4 and 6.5 got grouped um trust systems are going to be for Stormblood. Remember that we don't have to do Shadowbringers because the trust system was invented in Shadowbringers. Mm -hmm. So that would be the end of trust system getting updated. Um, we will be getting more areas for Island Sanctuary. It seems like it's going to get supported every patch for at least a little while. Um, remember that in addition to this, we are still finishing out Pandemonium, finishing out Mist of the Realm, mm -hmm. doing more with Faux Hollows, having other trials. Um, so all of this is happening. Now, they told us all this, and I was like, why are they telling us all this? This is crazy. Why would they tell us all of that? Um, you know, like, it's just so much. Well, here's why. Because they wanted to remind us just how much content comes every patch. Mm -hmm. Those slides are packed with things coming out, and there's more. Patch cycles previously have been every three and a half months. Um, that's why some people say three months, some people say four. It, it kind of hovers in between. The 0 0.0 to 0 0.1 can delay. The 0.5 to the 0 0.0 can, can kind of lag out. So, like... But typically every three and a half months, that's how Brian and I always guess when we think the next patch is, is we're like, well, how close to three and a half months are they? Um, that is now sliding out to four months. In addition to that, they're going to be adding one additional week to the development pacing in the summer and around New Year's. Mm -hmm. So every year you'll have time for three cycles minus two weeks. So it's always going to be sliding. So that sounds like it's like a 25 month dev cycle for an expansion for me, unless the 0 0.0 or 0.5 patches run long. In which case, like you're still talking about, it's easily exceeding two years. So I don't know what this does for 7.0. Right. It's big. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is really healthy. Um, but like to remind us, they said, you know, in addition to our one week off, keep in mind, this is how big patches have gotten. Yeah. This is uh, the point three was historically the really large patch that finished up story um, up until this expansion where we move into a new one with point one. So here is 3.3 versus 5.3. Heaven's Word versus Shadowbringers. Yeah. These are massive, uh, massive increase. Yeah. Number of quests doesn't tell me anything, but number of cutscenes. Right. But it's also types of content. You're talking about all oh, the amount of times in the cutscenes, various bosses. Like when you look at all these little things, it's just going up and it's just feeling like, oh, you know, like at some point, like as the devs, it's like you feel like, hey, wait a minute. We made the track longer, but we're still expected to run it in the same amount of time. And I think honestly, like them shifting to four months is something we've talked about before. It's like, does this help? Like, does this give us a like one of the things we've hoped to see is that, you know, more localization for other languages. Spanish would be a huge language. I know that even there is a Spanish community around 14. That they've talked to Yoshi P and it's like, we don't know if that's obviously confirmed here, but ultimately it's like being able to give the dev team more time to get the job done. It just, I think it just makes sense overall. Um, yeah. So that's, that's where we went from there. Um, they talked about, uh, Koji Fox, 
um, has been in more of a supervisory role and less of the direct localization. Uh, and Kate here has been handling localization since it sounds like Shadowbringers. Um, Koji is still around. And, you know, they said people may uh, think that it's that we're bleeding people off to Final Fantasy 16. That's not what's happening. It's, it's just a natural um, move as other people have kind of come into being highly qualified staff of their own. So he can focus on like music and things like that. Um, I saw there's already been a, during the live letter, I saw there was already press sites putting out that uh, all of the big talent is kind of being bled off to Final Fantasy 16. Um, and so like, I've already seen misinformation about like, he said like specifically that wasn't what he thought was happening. Um, but, you know, it, it seems like they're kind of just, the, the team is getting bigger. The team is getting larger. The amount of things they're doing is bigger. Um, he's, they put out a request for people that want to be devs. Like, if you want to apply, apply. Mm -hmm. Not yep. because they're diluting the existing team, but because the number of things they're taking on is growing. Um, and so it's not about, like, the staff being split. It's that they have plenty of talented people and they want more talented people. Um and then they went into a huge Q&A that was a lot of really beefy questions from Azem to uh, Asians to all sorts of things about Endwalker. So, uh, you know, for anybody that wants to know Endwalker stuff, that all took place after this. Um, and those will be more that we can go over at a future date. Awesome. Awesome. How you feeling, Brian? Well, I feel like we didn't necessarily get like a 10 year plan, but we more or less got a two year plan, which isn't bad. Like this is more information we've ever had going from an expansion launch and looking forward. But the fact that we're getting a graphics update, that is really exciting to see. That is something that like the only other question I feel like I get asked all the time about Final Fantasy whenever they make big announcements is have they changed the battle system and is there a graphical update? Now I can say there's definitely a graphical update uh, for the game. And I think that's going to be something that a lot of people really, really enjoy. Uh, and they'll be curious to see like that continues to say, hey, they're investing in their current engine and their in current environment. So I didn't gather anything like massively radical, right? Like I'm not seeing anything that's like, oh my gosh, what does this mean for the future? Like right. I don't, I don't see anybody like coming off of this, this news going, oh, okay. Like, do I play now or do I wait till 7.0 or something like that? So that's something where it's like, it feels really good to have the understanding, like you said, with the four month cadence and, and the patch content and what we can expect in that cycle. Excuse me, it yeah. is late. Like at the time of this recording. For no, it's not a full 10 year watching. plan. It yeah. will be split over multiple plans like this. We will have more things like this telling us, okay, and here's the next big reveals mm -hmm. and here's the next big reveals. And so we may get one of these every expansion. Right. And um, that's actually really exciting to have that like, Hey, all right. But you know, you're wondering about X, let's go ahead and give you our vision for it enough because we know that we can feel mostly that we can deliver on that and we'll let you know if that changes the fact that we get another ultimate like i feel like this cycle but from here till 7.0 feels incredibly meaty like it feels incredibly meaty deep dungeons coming back we get the scaling dungeons that you told me about uh we get like all of this content we get you know graphics updates we get the trust system for, to make this game more inviting to new players like that actually is one of the cooler aspects that we've sh like wondered like if you if you're trying to say that you can come and enjoy final fantasy 14 and then all of a sudden pretty much at level 15 you're now being pushed in with other players and maybe you're just not ready for that yet this is i think will be a nice little touch and then ultimately just like with the story plus like even though you and i both want some form of leveling or some like i just give me five percent experience for doing new game plus just as a just as a like hey you did it um like even though we're both in agreement on that ultimately new game plus is such a powerhouse of a feature this is going to end up being i think a very powerhouse feature for final fantasy 14 as a game that's inviting people into it yeah i think you roll that out in 7.0 after trust system's been enabled for the whole backlog yeah exactly you've got a chance to have redone all the dungeons anything that doesn't feel good they've gone back and dealt with um, I, I think you deal with it at that point, you know, and they, they said in a past thing that they wanted to update glamour. Um, and that would be a two part thing. One would be a massive overhaul. The other would be plates and inventory increases, mm -hmm. uh, early in Endwalker. Yeah. They said in 6.1, we're getting more glamour plates. So like 
there's there's all of these little things that say that they're doing this, but none of this went beyond 7.0 really outside of like some things may slip into 7.0. Right. Nothing was really like, and here's 7.3 and here's 8.0. Right. Like they didn't talk about any of that. Um, uh, at the end, they did go over housing a little bit as just kind of a refresher. We are moving to lotteries. It does seem like 100% the lottery, system, lottery, though. So 100% they, lottery the, does seem to be the default, which is is against what they said originally, that there would be yeah. some wards first come, first serve, and some lottery. They, they decided to go all lottery across all wards. with, And then they say that there's enough demand. They, can, they haven't deleted the first come, first serve systems. They're just going to shift to this for now. And I guess let players give some feedback on how that ultimately plays out, which I think is okay. Got it. Check, check, check. Uh, free trial. It's coming Comes back, back, baby. February 22nd, um, which is, is great. Uh, we'll have another live letter in two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be the actual 6.1 and be its first preview. The first I don't one. We're still getting a second one. Assuming we, we would still be get the second one. Yeah, that, that means easily April. easily pushes this into April. April. It has to. Because Easy. even if they're two weeks apart, that slides it into the latter half of, of March. And the second live letter has historically been right at kind of two weeks from the patch. I still think that we've seen live letters April. be gapped out at easily four to six weeks. They have been six weeks. You know, so it's like at the end of the it day, like, May. man, infinite. And then that's, we April. haven't seen that. It could be May. It could, yeah. So uh, just note that uh, if you are feeling the burn uh, when it comes to Final Fantasy fourteen, we always encourage, just like Yoshi P says, take a break. Don't play through the burn there's lots of games to play right now chris and i are enjoying some so just note that that is definitely an option and uh yeah so then they're going to sell us the, the soundtrack just msq wise or i mean i'm uh, just mmo wise uh lost ark old uh Swoter, guild wars destiny um yeah just just talking mmos like we're ignoring that tiny little game elden ring that a few of you may have <laughs> we're ignoring the final fantasy 6 pixel remaster we're ignoring like just mmos triangle strategy um, baby 9.25 uh is is looking packed for wow 9.2 drops uh the 22nd um and that your 9.25 allows alliance and horde to to raid and run dungeons together so like i mean even even wow has content before 6.1 so there is there is a ton coming out um just within the mmo space and then of course the rest of gaming is still crushing it um yeah you hear uh, amazon is making here. a third mmo <laughs> um i'm not joking of, <laughs> go ahead yeah, probably uh <laughs> lots of lots of qvc stuff at the end there uh they are now hiring graphics engineers and game designers um and so lots going on absolutely packed live letter um this was a lot one that's like legitimately going to be followed up with another live letter about six one. I like should like talking more about what they showed here with more of an arrow focus, and then <laughs> it's just like, wow. I I I as a as a longtime fan, it's been crazy for thirteen years to think that I'll be covering Final Fantasy fourteen and sharing uh the beautiful message of yoshi p with the world here <laughs> and, and be like at some point be like yeah back in my day 23 years ago we were uh we, we didn't have these things called trusts i don't get what you whippersnappers are getting at you know, you know. <laughs> and it, it opens up another debate right like right now you've asked me you know like like we've talked about you the whole MMORPG versus RPG yeah. MMO thing and i've said like as the game sits right now i don't think that's a valid thing because i think it it tricks people who want a multiplayer experience and then come in and they're like wow there's a lot of stuff i can't do with my friends right but it also tricks people who are like oh cool i can play it by myself and then you're they like, get no. to their very first dungeon no 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 um but like we're talking about the free trial being trust enabled by 6.3 right but 6 i still stand will like enable the entire right. free trial to be a solo experience so minus like eight minutes the uh and, and i get like obviously you and i we've had this like you know we've this conversation in you know minute multiple times but even back in 2.0 i said it was a final fantasy game that sits on top of an mmo i don't define a four-man dungeon as anything that's mmo i define that with that be multiplayer online rpg you know like that's where that comes in i think mmo for me and it always like everybody's gonna have that in person that it, like interpersonal interpretation is coming down to the concept of like community and like uh you know trade and things like that where like even if i'm just doing my solo thing there's still kind of a bigger thing that's going on and i'm 
a part of that bigger thing. And it's hard to kind of quantify because like if I come from, I, again, I come from a Final Fantasy XI background. And if you put those side by side, it doesn't necessarily mean a theme park can't be an MMO because we are seeing theme parks actually come and adopt some of the things we haven't seen, like player driven economies and things like that, where those are systems that that actually unite people rather than divide people. You know, like when, when we look at it, it's like you see this rise in the casual versus the hardcore. It's like in a not that all systems like no there's no utopian system here that I, I can't i'm not advocating for a like oh this this game over here did it perfectly no everything is flawed and there's always going to be faults in any system but when you have the fact that like i could go and just like gather some things and some raider actually takes advantage of that there's a there's that that the concept of the trade ends up and that's just my my b belief because in 11 that was so prevalent to my experience i could just sit and fish all day and yet that's actually having an impact on people who are trying to go take down the shadow Lord. Like I'm a part of that even indirectly. And so that's where it's like, I always want to get 14 to that state though. I think it would take a, an, an immense amount of copium. <laughs> no, you know, like it's just like that. I could, I wouldn't, I would, I, it's easier to upgrade graphics than it would be to do something as insane as that would be. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, action RPGs are better poised to be somebody that you can't decide if they're an MMO or not, because you truly can play the entire experience solo, mm -hmm. um, or you can truly play the entire experience with friends uh, from the get-go. You can log in at the same time and join the same instance and do all of your progression together, um, as opposed to this really feels more fixed in that like you you have to interact with other people. And that that's a shift here, yeah. especially when you look at people like you know, Sloot or, or somebody like that that comes into this space as an MMO player who's never played the originals. This game should invite you into the Final Fantasy experience and then halfway through, like, preach saying, now I got to take a break to go play this Final Fantasy solo experience because I feel like I'm missing stuff mm -hmm. and I want some of that fan service to be something I catch instead of just passing me by. So they stop to go play other games. But then you go from, from the other direction, you have people like Night Sky Prince who only play this game because they're like, well, I've already played all the Final Fantasy games. I should try the MMOs too. But, like, is not an MMO player. So I, I think they're... They're really trying to span that gap yeah. and say this game is meant to be whatever it needs to be to you, and it can be taken entirely as that thing. I would love to see from this, from the amount of trust update here, I would love to see it go the other direction where single player scenarios are now multiplayer enabled. Oh, that so is this so can be wonderful. fully MMO because now we're talking about being fully. Well, we're getting solo. scalable dungeons, right? And so it's like just give the gamer the flexibility, right? right. Like, hey, I should not have to drop party to go do this thing. Like, oh, just come in and then we're just going to scale things up make it harder you yeah. know what it's just me i'm not going to sit here and my friends aren't online or i don't i don't want to reach you out break the fight who cares who, like especially now like <laughs> like oh no you beat that thing that everybody beat like but you gave us ago. poetic sets that could just smash it anyway exactly so like you clearly don't care about the balance of the story because things aren't difficult for new players in some of those single player scenarios where you go buy a set with poetics and then just like slam things the, the um, only danger is is that whenever that player if, if they if you have to look at the entire like balance of that their experience because if they ever run into a point where it's like everything just melted and then i hit this quest and i couldn't get past it right <laughs> like yeah, everything yeah. i was like okay everything's just butter and i am freaking magma and then all of a sudden it's like you're not and then it's like wait a minute like what did i do wrong like so ultimately like I, I want I've wanted that scale because yeah, hey, you're playing. I'm with you. You're my buddy. You just you just started on the free trial. I'm gonna be in your party and yes, we're just gonna just go have fun. Right now it feels like or if nothing else, like just give me some, you know, give right. me get more reason to be there. And I think that's gonna help build stronger bonds and stronger communities. They did not address the new player experience. Um they did not um give us really anything from 7.0 and beyond um truly and really um there's there's a lot they didn't didn't do they didn't talk about are there going to be new platforms supported in the future yeah um there were a lot of things that like they could they could still announce that none of this contradicted um that could still come later so like i don't think they're done blowing our mind oh yeah uh, so this was a lot but like there's still 
more to come from this game. This was not a 10 year plan exhaustively. This was, here's the beginning of the things that are gonna happen over the next 10 years. These things uh, are the building blocks for the things to come. And right. speaking as a developer, as a software engineer and living and breathing, and that's how I provide for my family, these are the building blocks that you have to address first before you can even begin to start to address the other things. And if people think that these are insignificant, let me tell you, this is probably some of the most grueling work because they're going through and actually touching product. You know, like they're not touching it in production, but they're having to go through. And that means a whole extra layer to like, not even in the term of getting the work done, but extra testing. Whenever I have to go into a project and this is not like one-to-one, -one, but like when I have to go into a project and have to update the data layer that, you know, like just that alone, we're adding a field. God, good for good Lord forbid that we remove a field. Like if we're removing a field, like legitimately, I think I eat Tums because it's that like, why are we removing it? Let's just hide it. Like there's, you know, it, it's just nuts. But if we're adding, it's like, you still have all these things and then you have endless things that you've already built on. Like imagine going into your, your house and you're like, I'm going to work in the basement. And you're like, you do something and you got to like, well, hopefully the whole daggum thing doesn't come collapsing down on me because that ends up being even more work. So you have to usually actually work a little bit slower. And so it is such a love letter to the community. I stand by that statement. I'm excited to see them do this. Chris, yep. is there anything else we want need to cover before they uh, we wrap up for this uh, this video itself? No. Uh, somebody in chat said, "What's going on with the roulettes?" Um, as of now, they have not said they have said the roulettes won't be affected in any way. I don't know if that includes MSQ roulette. I think they'll go over that more as we get to the 6.1 stuff. Um, th this left a lot of questions on like the granular detail. Um, so keep in mind that we will cover the live letter in two weeks, and if there is a second live letter for 6.1, we will cover that one as well. Uh, we will keep covering live I just, letters I repeatedly. I personally um, hope that the second one isn't on uh, two weeks after the March 4th because I'm actually out of town. I'm on here. I'm here on March 4th, but if they, we will two weeks after that, deal I'm with busy. it. That's why we'll we'll figure it out. That's why we got we'll two of us. Figure it out. I think if we have to cover from a hotel room, we will. We will. We will cover it. This um, is Brian reporting from location somewhere in the world. <laughs> so, um, if you guys want to go work for Square Enix, go apply. Um, somebody saying the links are broken, but that that, that could just be right. Oh, it's. I think it's getting rushed. It came up on uh, my phone just but, fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, then I'm, I'm gonna go apply. Um, go do that. Thank you guys for uh being with us those of you that were with us uh live we got an epic amount of support but especially from farmer girl thank you it seems like as i look back through the subscriptions a ton of you came and shared prime a ton of you have been hitting months like nine months and 12 months and 14 months um huge amounts of support lots of bits so thank you guys for all of that it makes what we do possible um and like every other one is farmer girl so thank you so much farmer girl Thank you, Varma Girl, and thank you uh, for watching this video. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button for more of these discussions and breakdowns, especially as it relates for MMORPGs. There's so much more MMO in our future. God, as my voice is failing, it's like 2 in the morning when I'm recording this. Uh, Chris is good doing some raiding in uh, Guild Wars, and uh, End of Dragons also launches. So, like, guys, there's just... It's a great time, I think, to be a fan of the genre specifically as we dive into 2022. Hopefully you enjoyed the video uh, and hopefully we'll see you in our next one. But until then, take care.